Hi, my name is John Fisher. I'm one of the chief residents in plastic surgery at the University of Pennsylvania. I'll be discussing the article entitled The Effect of Residency and Fellowship Type on Hand Surgery Clinical Practice Patterns by Meta et al. from the NYU School of Medicine. This is a fascinating survey study that provides very useful data on the role and function of plastic surgeons in the specialty of hand surgery. In performing this study, uh, the author has administered a survey to U.S. members of the AAHS and ASSH, uh, which was a 20-question survey uh, designed to compare orthopedic trained and plastic surgery trained hand surgeons uh, with respect to long-term uh, practice patterns, specifically practice structure and type, volume and case mix, as well as referral and reimbursement patterns. The authors achieved a 39% response rate with three-fourths of the surgeons being orthopedic surgeons and one-fourth being plastic surgeons with on average 15 years of hand experience. Overall, there was greater than a 90% rate of hand fellowship training. Important differences were noted between orthopedic and hand, uh, hand surgery and plastic surgery trained fellowship uh, hand surgeons. And these included the following. Plastic surgery trained hand surgeons were more often engaged in academics, less frequently part of multi-specialty groups, and less often involved uh, in suburban practice environments. Plastic surgeons, furthermore, uh, tended to less often use the ambulatory surgery center, uh, but more often uh, were involved with hospital surgery, uh, as well as acute uh, care uh, of patients within the hospital setting. <clears throat> A greater proportion of plastic surgery-based uh, hand practices was derived from ER referrals, and frequently plastic surgeons uh, were more willing or more often accepted Medicare and Medicaid. In summary, these initial data provided by Meta et al. demonstrate that plastic surgery trained hand specialists play a very important role in the academic urban care uh, of patient populations and add great value uh, to health systems by seeing and treating complex and uh, acute ER referrals and addressing the acute care-based needs of relatively underserved patient populations. Interestingly, uh, the case uh, composition of orthopedic and hand uh, plastic surgeons differ uh, with respect to the volume of hand surgery in which orthopedic um, surgeons perform a greater proportion of uh, hand surgery in a higher volume. Specifically, uh, with respect to case mix, orthopedic surgeons uh, treated more distal radius fractures, uh, performed more carpal bone surgery, performed more uh, cubital tunnel release, and more often were treating uh, 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 and using palmar fasciectomies as part of their practices. Plastic surgeons, by contrast, uh, more often performed nail bed repairs, digital replants, and congenital hand cases. Interestingly, the practice composition differences that were noted across uh, fellowship training um, disappeared uh, when uh, a plastic surgery uh, uh, resident trained uh, surgeon performed uh, or underwent uh, orthopedic uh, hand-based fellowships. Um, and these uh, findings are important and speak of the practice patterns uh, amongst the 1,000 established hand surgeons of different backgrounds. Hi, my name is Dr. Laura Tom and I'm a fourth year combined plastic surgery resident at the University of Washington in Seattle. I will be discussing a few limitations of this paper as well as a few comments regarding the study survey. First, I agree as the authors comment the main limitation of the study is that it is based on a self-reported study. This limits the accuracy of the results to selection and recall bias. However, the response rate of 39% is exceptional for a survey study of any kind. Second, the study design and results are for the most part limited to comparing the practice patterns between residency completion, orthopedic versus plastic surgery, rather than their completed fellowship type, orthopedic, plastic, or combined. Most orthopedic residents completed an orthopedic-based hand fellowship, whereas plastic surgery residents tended to complete orthopedic, plastic, and combined programs in more equal numbers. Thus, within the two comparison residency training groups, the fellowship training was not similar, which makes it more difficult to make inferences on practice variation based on residency training alone. Regarding the survey itself, I found the most interesting questions 
comparing procedure patterns of this survey to be questions 17, 18, 19, and 20. Question 17 asks, is the amount of hand cases less than you would like, yes or no, followed by question 18, which asked why, listing lack of referral, lack of demand, oversaturation, personal choice, and other as responses. Nearly half, 43% of orthopedic and 51% of plastic surgeons felt that they wanted to do more hand cases, most citing that personal choice and oversaturation as being the reasons they were not. There were no significant differences amongst reasons for lack of hand cases between the two sets of surgeons. Now, despite the described differences in practice patterns between orthopedic and plastic surgeons, the desire to have a different volume hand practice and the self-described barriers did not vary, making it difficult to link residency completion and this particular aspect of practice pattern, specifically the desire to, for more hand cases and barriers obtaining to that, to residency completion alone. In question 19, the authors identified procedural differences between orthopedic and plastic surgeons and found orthopedic surgeons did more bony work and plastic surgeons did more nail bed injury repair congenital hand cases, and digital replantation. This was followed by question 20, which found that orthopedic surgeons wished they had learned better how to do congenital hand and digital replantation during their uh, training, and plastic surgeons wished they had more experience with distal radius fracture repair. One criticism is that the survey did not attempt to answer whether the procedural practice difference was by choice, by referral, or training discrepancies. And finally, the only comparison that was made between fellowship completion occurred in the final table, which compared plastic surgeons with ortho-based fellowships and plastic surgeons with plastic-based fellowships, and the same for orthopedic surgeons. The plastic surgeons with ortho-based fellowships did more bony work than their colleagues who did plastic-based fellowships. The comparison between orthopedic surgeons was not robust enough to draw conclusions as there are only nine surgeons who completed a plastic-based fellowship, compared to the over 700 who had completed an ortho-based fellowship. I'd like to send a thank you to the authors for an interesting paper on hand surgery practices from the orthopedic and plastic surgery background, and thank you, the viewer, for your time and attention. And now to Dr. Yasha Vashya, who will wrap up our discussion. To summarize, there are 77 hand fellowship programs that are accredited by the ACGME today with no set of core competencies for them. This has led to a disparity in the training experience amongst programs that are orthopedic surgery based or plastic surgery based. This article highlights a few differences. While these findings are somewhat self-explanatory, the real question to ask is what do these findings mean for residents seeking to apply to hand fellowships today? In my opinion, I feel that it will help them tailor uh, their decision as far as which programs to rank higher than others based on their ultimate career goals. In addition, it definitely raises awareness for programs today regarding the disparity across the board amongst hand fellowship program. In addition, it also raises the awareness and the need to set a, a set of core competencies to help standardize the training experience amongst hand fellowships today.